How do I handle targeting and areas of effect in 3D? I'm totally okay with regular grid and counting squares for purposes of movement, spell and weapon targeting, and determining areas of effect. Area shapes neatly match with measurements made square by square, so I may construct any irregular shape if needed, including things like spreads. What I can't find rules for is how to count above things in three dimensions, including double diagonals. If I understand correctly, at least first diagonal should be free on both axes for far edges of areas to be consistent for effects and weapons to affect things on those edges, but is there some rule for how to count squares after the first, and if there isn't one, how you suggest to handle this? For example, how would you build a 20-foot radius sphere originating from a point, situated 20 feet above the ground? For simplicity, you may provide four pictures, showing areas affected 0 to 5 feet above the ground this one would be 10 foot square, 5 to 10 feet above, 10 to 15 feet above, and 15 to 20 feet above this one would be regular 20 foot radius circle. As a note, for now I handle this mostly by looking, what radius circle would a sphere share with a plane, situated on a given height, and then use this radius as a new area of effect for those on this height. But it doesn't seem to always produce right results. In my example above, this method would result in second and third layers to be identical, which is probably incorrect. Also, I play mostly by post, so time is not an issue. As is common in D&D 3.5e, I am referring to squares when I really mean cubes. Just take square as game jargon, which it is in this case, anyway, so the 5ft, 10ft, is an approximation of having diagonals cost $1.50 times dollar the distance, which itself is an approximation of having them cost dollar sqrt 2 times approximately 1.414 times dollar Pythagorean theorem says a right angle with dollar a dollar for the legs will have a hypotenuse of dollar sqrt 2 times a dollar, a double diagonal will be the hypotenuse of a right angle with legs of dollar a dollar and dollar sqrt 2 times a dollar so the hypotenuse will be dollar sqrt 3 times a dollar so we need an approximation of dollar sqrt 3 times approximately 1.732 times dollar if we round that to $1.75 times dollar, we need 5ft, 10ft, 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 so moving 4 squares costs 35 feet, of movement, $1.75 times dollar the 20 feet, it would usually take, obviously, 5ft, 10ft, 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 is a pain, and also it's much more questionable to start with 5 feet, on the first square than it was for the 5ft, 10ft, scheme. It's also less clear how to combine it with single diagonal movement in the same turn. You probably shouldn't be able to go 5 feet for a double diagonal square and then move on a single diagonal for another 5 feet. The most accurate way to resolve this is to imagine the 5ft, 10ft rule as actually being 7.5 feet every time. Then it's really 7.5 feet rounded to 5 feet, 15 feet rounded to 15 feet, so 10 feet beyond the first. For the double diagonals, we're looking at 8.75 feet, which is still rounded down to 5 feet the first time, and then 17.5 feet rounded to 15 feet total distance, 26.25 feet, 25 feet, 35 feet, 35 feet, may be easier to see in tabular form. Here, dollar $d$ dollar is the actual, unrounded distance, dollar $l$ floor $d$ r$ floor dollar for the rounded distance, and dollar $delta $l$ floor $d$ r$ floor dollar for the cost of the latest step. Each step should cost what's listed as dollar delta l floor d r floor dollar begin array c c c text bf straight line and text bf single diagonal and text bf double diagonal begin array c c c d and l floor d r floor and delta l floor d r floor line phantom 0 5 and phantom 0 5 and 5 10 and 10 and 5 15 and 15 and 5 20 and 20 and 5 end array and begin array c c c D and L floor D R floor and delta L floor D R floor line phantom 0 7.5 and phantom 0 5 and phantom 0 5 15 phantom point zero and 15 and 10 22.5 and 20 and phantom 0 5 30 phantom point zero and 30 and 10 end array and begin array C C C D and L floor D R floor and delta L floor D R floor line phantom 0 8.75 and phantom 0 5 
5 and Phantom 0 5 17.5 Phantom 0 and 15 and 10 26.25 and 25 and 10 35 Phantom 0 .00 and 35 and 10 end array end array combining single and double diagonals then becomes possible by leveraging those fractions 7.5 feet plus 8.75 feet is 16.25 feet, so the second step when moving single diagonal then double diagonal is going to cost 10 ft, but the 1.25 feet extra is less than the 2.5 feet extra from two double diagonal moves. By tracking that extra you can keep track of how far a character has actually moved, and if you actually bother with this mess, I salute you, because this is insane. Unfortunately, yeah, this is the reality of 3D movement in D&D 3.5e. I strongly recommend a gentleman's agreement to just keep things grounded, or house rule in some form of abstract flight, here's mine. 